Hey guys, Jake Bo here, the Habitat Pro. Well, here we go. What's better for deer habitat than switchgrass? This video has been long awaited, much requested. So hopefully this helps you out in your habitat endeavors on your property. What we're gonna talk about today are the negatives of switchgrass, and there are several. We're gonna talk about and show you the process that I use to get this going on my property where I had black dirt. And we're also going to uh, show you a couple of areas that are several years in the making that were black dirt and that were now changed over to deer bedding, prime deer bedding, much better than switchgrass. And then we'll also talk about some of the cost share options available to you if you decide to go this route on your property. All right, well, what are some of the negatives with switchgrass? Well, number one is it's really tough to get going. That's why there's so many switchgrass videos. Everybody's frustrated with it, okay? So that's the biggest one that I see what can we do to reduce that frustration with guys that are used to planting food plot plants that pop up five days after a rain? That doesn't happen with switchgrass. We don't have that, we don't get that instant reward. And since it is so slow and we don't pay attention to it, more problems can come in where we actually lose a stand that is promising to perennial grasses coming back or weeds or what have you that outcompete a young stand of switchgrass. Another problem I have with switchgrass is winter standability. No matter what type you say is great at winter standability, it's still grass. It cannot stand up to a northern winter. It just won't. Don't trust it to do it. It will not stand up when we get the heavy snows and the snows just keep on coming. Now, if you're in Missouri, Southern Iowa, Illinois, and you get 45 degree days for several weeks in a row, and then you get one winter storm, and it happens throughout the winter, congratulations, you're in a great part of the country. Northern latitudes, guys, don't trust switchgrass for your deer habitat. It won't stand up when you need it to stand up. What does stand up? Clear cut, this right here. Woody, stemmy growth, young forest plants and shrubs and trees those stand up. One other negative I have with switchgrass is it's not food. So it's very similar to a buckthorn forest where it's cover, but it's not food. So if you devote a huge acreage to switchgrass on your property, then you're gonna have to come up with more acreage that is also food. And then even then, when over half of a deer's diet are twigs, buds, you know, woody growth, they have to find that somewhere. Your switchgrass patch is not going to be the prime bedding that you think it is because it's not food. This is food, this is cover. All right, so those are some of the negatives of switchgrass. So what's better than switchgrass? How do we get this type of habitat? Well, it's a process called direct forest seeding. The DNR has been using this for a lot of years. Typically, it's just with oaks. They typically just scatter acorns and then disc them in. But as deer managers, we want the good deer plants. So I developed a blend for my property that is my native trees and shrubs that I know deer enjoy up here in northern Minnesota. And it's what I've noticed our prime bedding always includes. So that's what I planted here on this property. But you can plant anything that is native in your area as well. All we're trying to do is use the trees and shrubs that drop seed every year on our properties to develop this type of young deer habitat behind us in our plowed fields. There's not a whole lot of negatives to this process and the benefits of it can be fantastic. Let's take a look at the planting process and those developed areas now. This is my tree seed mix. You can see just a wonderful blend of goodness in here beautiful batch of diversity right there. So this is seed that has been broadcast on tilled ground and then disked in. There's a lot of box elder in here. There's some maple, there's a lot of elm. And the box elder seems to be what's dominating in here, probably because of deer browse. They're selecting out the 
elm, which we'll see right over there. What we're standing in is about a two year seeding where they have controlled the grasses. All right, so this is the seven year seeding. There's the ranger. You can tell by the height of this stuff how good it is. This is all the stuff on the edge. So it's been browsed pretty heavy. Coming in here, we've got ash, a willow. There's some dogwood in the natural seed bank here. There's a box elder. Here's the red azure dogwood. And here's what happens to elm in the deer woods. It has turned into an elm bush rather than an elm tree because of how desirable it is. So we're walking through, this is all the same year seeding, but on the edge, it's mowed off. And on the interior now, where we've gotten away from the edge, now we've got an impenetrable thicket. All right guys, hopefully that was useful to you. Again, check with your local DNR offices because there may be cost share available in your state for this in Minnesota. As of 2020, cost share was available at up to $375 per acre to buy the seed and put it in. It's just a great way for you to maximize your small acreage habitat and really get some good daylight hunting going right in front of you with that high quality bedding. This is Jake Bull, the Habitat Pro. We are in northern Minnesota. Get out and enjoy creation, guys. Good luck and God bless.